heard him speak on more than one occasion. He's probably given some of you the sales pitch to come out and be a member of Toastmasters. On more than one occasion. And he's been, he's represented our club at the district competitions, and been a past speaking champion for District 32 here in Washington State. This will be a short entertaining speech. The title of the speech is More. We'll now welcome up the speaker. Please welcome Dan Weedy. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and anybody who's ever wanted more. St. Patrick's Day, 2011. If you had been a fly on the wall that day in my dad's room at Liberty Shores Assisted Living, right over there, you would have been witness to my dad's final day awake. Now, Meredith, I'm not going to make you cry, I promise. Wherever you are, Meredith, I'm not going to make you cry. His final day, uh, hospice had been there. He had been dying from bladder cancer for the past five months. And, and hospice had been there, and shortly after, I mean, sh within 15 minutes after they walked out the door, Dad, sitting in his favorite chair, slowly drifted into a coma. And we had been expecting that. In the room, besides myself, was my wife, Barb, my oldest daughter, Mindy, who ironically was studying to become a nurse, and my sister, Rita. And so I, I realized that Dad didn't have more time to talk to anybody else, and to be able to say goodbye. And so I got this brilliant idea to pull out my iPhone. I knew Dad couldn't speak, but I knew that he could hear, or at least that was what everybody told me, that he can still hear. So I called my youngest daughter, Kelly. I called his sister back east, and I went through about five or six key people that I thought at least would have the opportunity to say goodbye. That was hard. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And by the time we were done with that, we were all just emotionally drained. So when one of the nurses named Sarah came walking in the door with ice cream, green ice cream because it was St. Patrick's Day, we were thrilled, absolutely thrilled, because we needed that little diversion. So we had all this ice cream, and I'm eating, I'm standing up eating, you know, I, I just need to add some nervous energy, and unbeknownst to me, I dropped some on the floor. And I was about to take a step forward, and the women in there, because all the rest who were away were women, yelled, STOP! Just as if, as if I had encroached over a White House no-fly zone. <laughs> yeah, I was about to step on the ice cream. So everybody's laughing and making fun of me because I was just, you know, a guy who dropped his ice cream on the floor and was going to step on it. And Bart was over holding my dad's hand and said, you know, Dad, we're all laughing at your son. He just about stepped on his ice cream. And like Lazarus coming out of the tomb, my dad sat bolt upright and said, did someone say ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> we were stunned. I mean, he, he was serious. He was, you know, somebody said ice cream. And I said, uh, yeah, Dad, we just had some ice cream. Would you like some? And he looked at me and said, certainly. Because ice cream was by far his favorite food ever. And so, I, a little bit fuddled, I walked, I said, I'll go get it. And I walked past the hospice people, they were still in the hallway upstairs. I said, who wants ice cream? And they looked at me, because they had just seen him. <laughs> and they said, okay. So I, I said, you know, he, he woke up and he wants ice cream. So Sarah said, who's one of his favorites, she loved my dad. She said, I'll bring it down, okay. So she comes down, and she's just as amazed, because she had just been down there. And so Barb took the ice cream. My dad was awake and he couldn't do anything. So she was feeding him ice cream. And Barb, like the good mother she is, says to my dad, Dad, what do you say to Sarah? And he looked right at her and he said, more. <laughs> and, and that was the last. 
last word he said, and it was his final meal, which I thought was very fitting. What about you? What more do you want in life? As a guy who is raising elderly parents, you find out that more comes, uh, you get less chance for more quickly. My oldest daughter's going to be 25. That's hard for me to believe. And so when I look at somebody like Brenda and Hugh, who have decided that they're going to go live a year in Paris, I think that's more. Is there a book out there that you want to always write that great New York Times bestseller that you haven't done yet? Is there a place you want to travel or things that you want to do that before it comes to time where you can't do more, you need to do? My encouragement to you is now find the time to do that because you don't want to get to a stage where you can't do more and you run out of that time. I mean, heck, you might want to someday be a school board president. <laughs> right? Or a city council guy. Probably not. No. <laughs> but truthfully, you may have things that you want to do that now is the time to do them. Think big. Think big, have fun, and get more out of life. Mr. Toastmaster.